Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Juan Solo here with A Squad Gaming and welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in today for another Ghost Recon Wildlands video. So today's video we're going to be talking about all of the classes that will be in the full version of PvP. So originally they did state that there's going to be 12 playable classes in PvP once the full release happens, whenever that may be. We don't have a date on that yet. But in the open beta we can play as 6 of the 12. And actually when you guys look at this you're going to see that there are 13 total classes that we can choose from. There's 4 assault classes, 4 marksman classes, 4 support classes, and 1 multi-class. So multi-class is what you start the game with, and we're going to take a peek at it. It's Recruit. So this is what everybody starts the game as, and it comes with a default AK-47. You can also use the G-28 or the Type 9.5, and uh, overall, it's kind of your, your basic class. The one really cool thing about this, though, is multi-class. You can equip all sorts of different perks across all classes onto this character, which is really, really cool. So, and then... Overall, you will have access to all the perks able to be on this class here, but you can only pick one. And then the next one is the Assault class, Point Man. So you guys have probably seen this in multiple trailers, and this guy is not actually what he looks like. This is the guy that I customized to look like what I want to look like. But uh, it comes default with the ACR, and then you also have access to the AK-12, which is another good assault rifle in this game. I do have the Athletic Sprinter on. The only secondary you get with the Point Man class as of right now is the Desert Eagle. Two frag grenades and four flashbangs, which that's that's a lot of tactical grenades. But you guys will see when you guys play this, the tactical grenades are very, very crucial um, when you get into certain situations. So the other class that you can actually play as in the open beta is the tank class. And as you see here, I do not have it unlocked yet, so I can't really show you guys in depth. But the one key thing, though, if you guys look right over here to the right, it's 115% health. This dude takes so many bullets to kill. It's it's He basically has more than double the health of anybody else. But then again, he's using a light machine gun. He's he's meant to be a tank. He's meant to distract people. He's meant to take bullets. And you know, and the old, the overall play style of a tank player, if you guys have ever played as one, it's to draw attention away from your teammates so then they can, you know, do the dirty work and stuff. So I haven't used this class yet. Really looking forward to using it. And then the next one is the Assassin. So this is one that we do not have available in the open beta, and this is Guerrilla Warfare. This one you can actually equip suppressors on your weapons which normally you can't in the open beta, but they did specify that you will be able to go in and actually customize all of your weapons, you know, swap out barrels, magazines, scopes, and all that stuff in the full version of PvP, but in the open beta, you cannot do that. You actually are locked to whatever the class is set up as when you load in. You can't actually change barrels or magazines or anything, which I was a little bit upset about that because, you know, that's one of the big things of the new Ghost Recon games is the gunsmith, going in and being able to, you know, do whatever you want with your weapon, to kind of set it so, you know, it's to your liking. But the one cool feature, as you guys will see over here, is plus 100% stamina. So she has twice as much stamina, so she can sprint longer and all that good stuff, which is really, really crucial because there is a stamina bar at the bottom of the screen that you guys will see when you're playing and stuff. And it's, it's very, very crucial to keep an eye on that. Otherwise, you might get into a situation where you need to sprint and you don't have any stamina. And uh, the last one here is tech. So the transmission denied, and this is using his jammer, the tech can deny the enemy access to valuable intel. So I'm assuming that if you try to go for the intel tower, if you're playing as this person, you can basically negate that so that you will not show up on the on like the radar and stuff, which it's, it's cool. It's a very unique thing. I mean, they're just trying to diversify the classes, and you can see that it comes default with the 9x19 VSN submachine gun, which it's not a bad weapon playing in the campaign. Um, but then we're going to go down here to the marksman classes, and the first one here is the enforcer. Um, and the enforcer, what he does is he is pretty much your suppressing fire guy. He um, does a lot of, uh, with with the suppressing fire feature in this game, he's one you're going to want to pick to lay down a lot of fire to keep enemies, you know, not able to shoot back at your teammates and stuff and try to keep them pinned down. I haven't used him yet. But uh, I'm not really a light machine gun player, but being the way this game plays, I might have to check that out. The next one is the Sniper, which as you guys can see here, I've actually got sniped quite a few times already by playing. And uh, Armor Piercer, it's, uh, it hits targets through any kind of cover, which I haven't actually had that happen to me. But you can shoot through walls and all sorts of different types of cover 
with this you know built-in perk and then there's also a side perk that you can equip to this that makes it so that when you shoot somebody and down them it's like i can't remember what it's called it's like extreme wounds or something like that that makes it so that it takes five extra seconds to revive that player which is crazy because it already takes five or six seconds to revive them so if you shoot somebody with a sniper rifle with that perk on it makes it so that it takes almost 12 seconds to revive them which in the way this game mode plays that is insane amount of time you know that it takes to revive somebody so that's going to be something that plays into this i really like the way they kind of distributed the perks like that so next we have the ranger so the ranger is actually not available in the open beta and it's the jack of all trades and you can uh, obviously here you can see that you can equip two primary weapons so you can see here he has an mk-14 assault rifle or a sniper rifle as his main weapon and some sort of like an smg assault rifle as a secondary weapon which that is insane because as of right now most of the classes that we play as in the beta you have a primary and a pistol there's a couple of them i believe that have some other stuff with them like machine pistols and stuff but for the most part you have a primary weapon and a pistol so this guy has access to a semi-automatic sniper rifle and a submachine gun which depending on the situation that's going to be very very vital because he can switch between them um, on the fly so lastly here we have the sentinel in the marksman class so this is a scouting focused marksman and uh it's it's obviously i haven't been able to use this class yet but it comes with the dragonoff svd and it's going to probably compare pretty close to the sniper class but just kind of a different variation of that so be interesting to see how this works in the full game Next, we have the support. So this is actually available in um, in the actual open beta, the artillery. And this is the guy that you want. You can call in a drone, and you can basically call in mortar strikes on your enemy team. So I have not actually died to a mortar strike yet. There is a slight delay. So if you are quick to react when it's over the top of you, um, where the mortars and stuff are going to land, if you react almost instantly, you can usually get out of the circle. If you are not paying attention and you have any delay to move out of the circle, you're probably going to die by it. So a lot of people thought, well, that's kind of overpowered, but it, there is a slight delay that makes it so that you can kind of get out of the circle if you're paying attention. Um, but if you're not paying attention and you're a little sleepy on your reaction time, you are definitely going to die by the mortars. So the next class here is the scout class. And this is actually one that's very, very, um, I wouldn't call it overpowered, but it's the way this uh, PVP works. The eyes in the sky, the scouts, that is huge. That is a huge skill, and it really helps on locating enemies, which is the very, very key thing, because enemies are actually really, really hard to spot um, with the naked eye. Um, sniper rifles do help you spot enemies, but overall, the scout is the best for spotting enemies. And the MPX submachine gun is like a laser beam. It literally doesn't have any recoil at all, and it has medium damage, so it's actually overall quite a good weapon. Next we have the Diversionist, so Military Deception, so you don't really get to see too much um, into exactly what his skills are, but I'm assuming that it's going to be, you know, to kind of divert enemies, um, maybe set uh, booby traps, or not booby traps, but kind of divert enemies so that they think there's somebody there, maybe he's got a skill or something that makes it so that he can have, uh, you know, a sound marker pop up where he is not at or something maybe, that'd be kind of cool, but it comes with the SR635 submachine gun, and I did use this one a little bit in the camp campaign not a bad submachine gun obviously not the best one but uh still a decent submachine gun and i like just the way he looks with uh, the gas mask and stuff on and then our last player here is the medic so i'm not surprised to see this class in the game you know for those of you guys that want to play the medic role i'm assuming that the main skill with this is going to be enhanced revive so you're going to be able to revive people much much quicker and it comes with the p416 assault rifle which is kind of your your generic assault rifle i know in the campaign that's what you start at with the in the campaign not a bad assault rifle um with the obviously you can see that the scope that's on that it's definitely not my favorite scope once the full version of pvp comes out and we're allowed to swap out you know barrels magazines stocks and stuff like that along with scopes probably not a bad class has a good weapon you know swap out the scope for maybe a reflex or an acog or something like that and it'll be a very versatile weapon and then you'll have the ability to revive players a lot quicker so the one thing you all have to remember there are four classes in each of the three main classes so what you can actually do is you cannot have the same subclass you can have multiple people in the assault class multiple people in the marksman class multiple people in the sport class but only one person can have say the point man only one person can rock the ranger only one person can rock you know the scout you can't have multiple people of the same thing and you can have actually one person rocking the multi-class which allows you to have access to 
a lot of the skills you can kind of pick between your skills and kind of make a custom class that kind of draws from all of them if you want but uh, overall these are the 13 classes that you will actually be able to play as in the full version of the beta but in the open or excuse me the full version of the game when it comes out at a later date but uh, as of right now we only have access to the point man the tank the enforcer the sniper right and the artillery and scout but overall guys from my experience so far i am going to try to put some gameplay in the background during this so you guys aren't just staring at a lobby screen the whole time but overall this game i've only played it for a couple hours and i'm absolutely having a blast and then they also did say that they're going to be adding more maps more game modes more customization and stuff for the full version so honestly i'm pretty excited guys you know i understand we had to wait almost seven months for this but they did a decent job. Once they add in a few different game modes and a few different maps, plus the ones we already have, I really feel as if this game mode and, and everything around this whole PvP mode in Ghost Recon is going to be a success overall. So, But that's pretty much all for the video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to slap that like button. Also, if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on everything there is Ghost Recon Wildlands. I am going to be streaming later on tonight, guys. And also, real quick, I apologize for not having anything up. Um, I've been so, so, so busy with work. I just have not had time to get on. I was just able to get on for the first time about a couple hours ago and play for an hour or two. But uh, overall, I'm really enjoying my experience, and I hope you guys have a chance to check out the beta because I know you will not regret it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Peace out.